A long-awaited plan by Boris Johnson's government to replace EU development money after Brexit will leave England's regions worse off at almost £80 million a year than they were when Britain was a member. That is something Whitehall insiders have warned. The deficit for England in the UK's replacement fund, the Shared Prosperity, Prosperity Fund or SPF, comes despite a promise in Boris Johnson's 2019 election manifesto that any post-Brexit Ukraine replacement funding would be at least the size of EU funds in every nation in the UK. When Britain was a member of the EU, around £1.5 billion a year was handed back from Brussels to the country's nations and regions in the form of structural funds to reduce inequalities and spur investment in business, skills, innovation and infrastructure. In October, the UK government announced that the replacement SPF would be £400 million this year, rising to £700 million in 2023 uh, and four, and just the EU level of one in 2024-25, uh, the final year of the current spending review, and they would be at £5 billion a year. The government argued that it would only ramp up to reach its EU re uh, equivalent at 2024-25, as the UK would receive the final allocations of EU funds by 2324. However, regional politicians, including in Wales, Cornwall, Northern Ireland, have dismissed the government's argument that old EU money should be counted. Full details of the SPF are due to be announced uh, soon, but uh, documents obtained by the Financial Times show that even in 2024-25, when the UK system is set to match its EU predecessor, regions of England, with the exceptions of Cornwall, in total will receive real 78 million less than under the EU system. Under the last EU financial settlement, England received an average of 996 million in 2024-25 prices, but under the UK scheme it will only be 918 million. Funds from a centrally held uh, fund will reduce the loss to England according to the documents. To match what it would have received from the EU, England would need to have received 3 billion in 24-25 prices from the government. Instead, it will just receive 1.56 billion over the three years of the current spending review, that's nearly 50% less than pledged. Henry Morrison, director of Regional Lobby Group Northern Powerhouse Partnership, said it was a bitter irony that northern regions like Teesside and Cumbria, both of which voted in large numbers for Brexit, but were major recipients of EU money, are bearing the brunt that would bear and would bear the reduced allotments. This is not what we were promised, he said, warning that the cuts would undermine the effectiveness of the government's levelling up agenda. This will be a difficult decision for Red Wall MPs, who will wonder why rising isn't a higher priority for the Chancellor. Well, yeah. Only Cornwall has been guaranteed funding under the SPF, but even there, local government officials have warned the government's failure to create a seamless transition between the EU and UK systems will result in losses to the region. Despite guarantees from the Treasury to match funding, the Welsh government warned in February that its budget could face £1 billion in losses by 2024. In Northern Ireland, ministers also disputed the UK government's claims that the SPF would eventually match EU funding levels. The Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities said the SPF will be in line with EU structural funds, adding that it would be managed more flexibly than the EU scheme. Our UK SPF will put local people in control of how UK money is spent, removing unnecessary red tape and allowing local communities to invest in the priorities that matter to them, a spokesman said. Yeah, we all know how good the UK already did with reducing red tape, so there's much more now than there ever was when they were a member of the EU, and they will spend less money on the regions than it was spent when the UK was a member of the EU. So it's another broken promise. I obviously don't have to start again with the red bus because now they're raising even <laughs> social contributions from the people to help the NHS, which was supposed to get 350 million pounds a week that they said they were saving because of the leaving the EU. No, they don't. And uh, 
still for anyone in the UK. No, I have to put it differently. For anyone in Great Britain, I don't see to date no advantage of Brexit. And I had to reduce it to Great Britain because there are some advantages for Northern Ireland because Northern Ireland is now in two single markets and two customs unions. And uh, they have an advantage there, that's true. But <laughs> on the cost of the rest of Great Britain, so to speak. And Northern Ireland is still a topic that this government is still working on to make a mess of it. But uh, that is going under the radar for the moment because of the Ukraine war, but that will pop up again. And it even didn't really pop up, although everyone was suspecting that when Scholz visited Johnson. But I'll come to that in another video today. And I'll see you in my next video. Bis gleich.